Are you a federal employee who is trying to weigh out the options of either working in the government until you reach retirement or leaving the government early to pursue other personal or professional goals? If so, you're in the right place. Because in this video, we're gonna cover the different benefits that you may be entitled to if you decide to take an early exit from federal service. We'll also discuss how to receive those benefits at the appropriate time. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jarrell Harvey with Federway Financial, and this is The Money Briefing. If you're new to this channel, we cover topics related to personal finance, federal benefits, and retirement planning. So if you find this video helpful, please consider sharing and subscribing. There are many advantages of receiving retirement benefits from the federal government. And many federal employees choose to remain in the government until they reach their retirement milestone. But there's also a lot of federal employees who choose to quit or separate from federal service before reaching retirement eligibility. In fact, there are more people who quit than retire from federal service each year. Based on information from FedScope, which is OPM's online data tool, an average of roughly 57,500 employees apply for a voluntary retirement between the fiscal years of 2020 and 2022. However, during that same period, an average of about 83,000 people resigned from federal employment. People choose to leave federal service for various reasons, and the benefits that you may be entitled to after leaving are largely driven by your years of service and age. There are several important mile markers in terms of length of service. And one of the key mile markers is the five year mark. If you leave the government before acquiring five years of credible civilian service, you are not eligible to receive future retirement benefits. For employees that fall into this category, you can apply to receive a lump sum payment of your first retirement contributions at any time after you leave the government. Depending on your start date, your contribution rate towards the first retirement system may be 0.8%, 3.1%, or 4.4%. In addition to your contributions, the lump sum payment would include interest if you work for more than one year. The contribution portion of your refund is not taxable, but the interest portion is taxable. If you want to avoid any immediate taxes, you can transfer the money to an IRA or company-sponsored plan rather than having the money paid directly to you. It's important to note that these contributions are different from your TSP contributions. You'll also have access to your TSP money, and if you have at least three years of credible service, the entire TSP account will belong to you, including any contributions and matching from the government. Once you separate from service, you have the option to leave the money in the TSP, take a distribution, or roll over the funds to a new retirement account. As I've mentioned earlier, the five-year mark is important because if you do have five or more years of credible civilian service, you are considered vested, and therefore you may be able to receive a monthly pension at a later date. To receive this potential pension, you must have at least five years of service and you have to keep your first contributions in the retirement fund. If you request a refund like we previously discussed, you cannot receive a pension at a later time. If you decide to keep your contributions in the retirement fund, you qualify for what's called a deferred retirement. Many people that qualify for a deferred retirement can start receiving a full monthly pension check at age 62. But if you have at least 20 years or 30 years of service, when you leave, you may be able to start your full pension at age 60 or at your minimum retirement age, which can fall between the ages of 55 and 57. Again, I want to point out that the ages and years of service that we just showed are the requirements to receive a full or unreduced pension. If you have at least 10 years of credible service, when you separate, you may also be able to qualify for a reduced pension benefit starting at your minimum retirement age. This provision is often called or referred to as the MRA plus 10. We're going to talk more in depth about the MRA plus 10 provision and the possibilities of postponing retirement 
in a separate video. As for the deferred retirement, your pension will be based on your years of service and high three average salary at the time of separation. Those two factors will be multiplied by 1%. If you're married when your pension begins, it will be reduced by 10% to provide a maximum survivor annuity of 50% to your spouse when you pass away. You can choose to leave your spouse a partial benefit or no benefit, but you must get your spouse's notarized consent to do so. Even though you can delay your pension payment, you will permanently lose access to your health insurance, life insurance, and dental and vision benefits after you leave the government. You will also lose eligibility for the first special retirement supplement. You don't have to worry about completing any forms until you're ready to get your deferred pension. The form to apply for your deferred retirement benefit is form RI-92-19. You should file your application directly with OPM about two to three months before you want your pension to begin. It's important to remember that you must take the initiative to receive your monthly check. If you don't request the pension, OPM will not pay it out to you. But on a somewhat positive note, if you forget to file your pension and finally do so, say, five years later, OPM will pay all five years of the back pension to you at one time in a lump sum, but this could cause a sizable tax situation. Overall, if you're weighing out your options of staying or leaving federal service early, there are some advantages and disadvantages, but your age and years of service could play a major factor into your final decision. If you received any value from this video, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to our channel to get more content like this. Addition, if you have any questions or comments about personal finance, federal benefits, or retirement planning, you can add them in the comment section below, or you can contact us by visiting www.fedwayfinancial.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Money Briefing. Thank you.